So we've been talking quite a bit about volumes and you've looked at the volumes of cylinders and prisms as basically having one formula, volume equals area to base times height. And we looked at volumes of pyramids and cones also basically having one formula, volume equals one third area of the base times the height. So all of those things are kind of in the same world. So we just got one more thing to really worry about. So we want to look at volumes of spheres today. Okay, and that'll finish, this will finish up our unit on volumes. The hardest part about doing all this is getting all of it mixed up. So let's learn volumes of spheres. Uh, what is a sphere, first of all? Well, a sphere is basically all the points equidistant from one point in space. Okay, so it's all points equidistant. from one point in space, okay? This is kind of like the three-dimensional version of a circle, because in a circle, we said it's all the points equidistant from one point on a plane. So you made your circle. All those points are the same distance from one point. But a sphere are all equidistant from one center point in a three-dimensional space, okay? now. Just like circles, spheres have a radius, okay? Um, same radius all over the sphere. It's not gonna change the whole time. So one radius, one sphere for the radius, or one radius for the sphere. There we go, I can speak. Um, the volume formula, I'll be honest, even when testing, this is not something I make people memorize. Most people don't remember the formula for volume of a sphere. For all the other shapes we've done, they tend to get used more often, even in the real world. But spheres, we don't really find volumes of too much. So this is not one that I would necessarily say you have to memorize, but memorizing it does help you out and make you a little faster with doing the work. So the volume of the sphere is the volume will equal 4 thirds pi r cubed. Okay. Remember we talked about dimensions and we said the length of something was one dimensional. So that's inches. The um, area of something length times width. So that's two dimensions. That's why it's inches squared because there's length and width. Even with the circle, pi r squared, radius and radius. Well, here with volumes, we looked at when you've got like a cube or something like that, length times width times height. So there's three dimensions that come together. In our sphere, the three dimensions are radius, radius, and radius. So that's where our third dimension comes from. So that's it. A lot of people get mixed up here. They want to see R squared in this case, but R squared is area. R cubed is volume. So that's one of those concepts. If you grasp that, it makes memorizing these formulas a little bit easier. So I'm going to increase my size here so we can get a little space to work. So finding a volume of a sphere is very, very easy. All I have to do is locate the radius. Okay. Once I know my radius, I'm going to write my volume formula. I always write my formulas because then I can remember them easier. Okay. And let's see, four thirds pi, my radius is three cubed. Okay. So I'm going to need my calculator for this. Okay. So I go to my calculator and I'm going to get four to the third power. So that's going to be uh, four. Now, when I do my two to third power, that's my up arrow. Where is that on this thing here? Do, 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 do. I got to go into symbols probably. If I can find it. Ah, uh, to the, to the, to the. Okay, I'm drawing a blank on where to do this. Okay, got to flip over to this other way to do this. There we go. So, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so four carat to the third power is 64. Okay, so that's going to give me 64. So I'm going to come back over to my notes here and I'm going to take a little moment, say volume is four thirds pi times 64. Okay, now multiplying pi four thirds times 64, that's 64 times four divided by three. Nice thing about the Desmos calendar, you can put that all in here. In fact, now that I've got that here, I'm just going to multiply by four thirds. Whoops. And there we go, 85.33333. Now, that's not a great answer, right? I kind of like my fractions. So instead of doing that, I'm going to do 64 
times four is 256, which is not divisible by three. So I'm gonna make my answer 256 pi over three, okay? That would be my exact answer, okay? If I needed exact answers, there's my exact answers. Or if I wanted the answer in terms of pi, that's my answer in terms of pi. If I wanted to round this, and for our homework tonight, you're gonna to be rounding pretty much all of your answers. So I'm gonna go ahead and round this answer. So I'm gonna take this 256, divide it by three, and multiply by pi. So 268.08, we'll call that our answer. Volume equals 268.08 centimeters cubed. Cubed, again, if you don't have the units, I'm not gonna really, go too big with the units. Either don't put the units or put the right units because if you put centimeters squared, well, that's not volume, that's area. So be careful, either use the right units or skip the units for now. Use your right units in your science classes or your science teacher will just mark it wrong, okay? I can hear my science teacher wife laughing in the background. So, he's right. see, all right. So looking at the next volume. Um, volume of a sphere, so volume equals four thirds pi r cubed. Radius, be careful that you get the radius and not the diameter. The radius is there. So if the diameter is 10, the radius is five. Good, that, that should be a very simple question. Just making sure you're paying attention. So I'll tell you what, take a moment to calculate this volume, round it to two decimal places, okay? So I went to my calculator, I got five to the third power, five to the third is 125. So that's four thirds pi times 125. And now I'm just gonna multiply all that out, okay? So 125 times four thirds, oops, gotta put that parentheses here, times pi is 523.60 0.60 is what this is going to come out to. Now, why six? A lot of you still having rounding issues. Okay, we're rounding to two decimal places. So I'm rounding to the nine. I look at the next number, which is eight. So that moves the nine to a 10, which means 59 becomes 60. There's some of you that are still rounding incorrectly. So 523.60. Volume equals 523.60 cubic centimeters. By the way, another thing I've seen a couple of people doing, they're putting their cubics on there, but they're putting the number cubed, okay? 523.6 is not raised to the third power. The centimeters are raised to the third power, okay? So look for little things like that. It's about communicating properly. All right. Okay, so let's take a look at another problem. We've got a surface area of a sphere is 36 pi. Surface area. Hey, let's talk about surface area and what's that mean? Because that's something that we don't really discuss too much in this course, but it is something interesting. So I'm gonna get a sphere. Here's my sphere, okay? So volume is how much water is inside the snow globe, okay? That's what volume is, or how much space the snow globe takes up. Surface area is how much glass is covering to make the snow globe, okay? If I were going to paint the snow globe, how much paint would I need to cover? That's surface area. It's literally the area of the surface, okay? So again, since it's area, it's in squared units. How much water is in here is in cubic units. So that's the difference between surface area and volume. Both are dealing with three-dimensional figures. So you gotta be careful about what kind of measurement you're doing. Kind of like perimeter was dealing with a two-dimensional figure, but it's a one-dimensional measurement of a two-dimensional figure. Surface area, which by the way, another formula I'm not gonna make you memorize. Surface area of a sphere is four pi r squared, okay? So we know the surface area in this problem is gonna be 36 pi. What is the volume, okay? Now there's no formula to immediately go volume equals surface area. There's no formula to do that. So I'm gonna say, well, what? here's one thing I know. Surface area is four pi r squared. My volume is four thirds pi r cubed. By the way, this is not dealing with the picture that I'm looking at here. That's a different problem. 
Okay. So I don't know my radius for my volume. I know my surface area is 36 pi. So I can substitute that into that formula. Now I can solve for my radius. I'm going to divide both sides by 4, and while I'm at it, by pi. Okay. When I do that, I'm left with r squared on the right-hand side and 36 divided by 4, okay, gives me 9. Just double-checking myself there. And now to get the radius, I need to take the square root of both sides. So that is going to give me a radius of 3. Now that I know my radius, I can go find my volume. Volume is 4 thirds pi 3 cubed. Go ahead and find that volume, round to two decimal places. Okay, so first mistake people tend to make on this, 3 cubed is 27. Okay, a lot of people square that. They just don't pay attention to what's going on there. Okay, so that's going to give me 36 pi. Interesting. This is a rare occurrence in which the surface area and the volume are the same. That won't always happen. So be aware of that. Okay. Uh, when I round that to two decimal places, 36 pi is 113.10. 113.10, or 113.1, I'll accept that as well. And that is in cubic centimeters. So notice the difference here. Surface area was in squared centimeters. That immediately told me I'm talking about an area. My volume is in cubic centimeters. So just by looking at the units, you can tell what type of measurement we're looking for. All right, next problem. What two figures do you see in this problem? All right, well, hopefully you were able to say, well, one's pretty easy to see. I can, let me get my highlighter here. I can see a cylinder. Okay, I'll highlight my cylinder in green. And I can also see not a sphere, but a hemisphere, half of a sphere. Okay, so I need two different formulas. So let's go ahead and get that hemisphere formula. If the volume of a sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed, then to get the volume of a hemisphere, what would you do? Hopefully you said you'd multiply by 2. Or I'm sorry, multiply by a half. Or divide by 2. You could do that. So I'm going to simplify that equation, okay? Rather than try to multiply by 4 thirds and multiply by a half, I'm going to create a volume for a hemisphere formula. That's going to give me 2 thirds pi r cubed. Now, if you wanted to add this to your memory of formulas, you could, but honestly, I don't even remember that. If I need to figure out the volume of a hemisphere, I'll figure it out. Why add ex extra stuff to memorize? So that's 2 thirds. My radius is what? Should be 6, okay? Notice the difference here. Uh, some people get mixed up on this. How do I know if they're talking about the radius or the diameter? Let me go back up to this one with the diameter. Notice where the 10 is located on this one. The 10 is right in the center. So that tells me they're talking about the diameter. On the problem that we're working with right here, the 6 is off to the side here. Okay, If they put the 6 right over top, that would make me think, oh, that's a 6 diameter. But they're talking about 6 being this, which, by the way, is the same as that. Okay. So 6 to the third power. I'm going to go ahead and calculate this all together. Uh, why don't you do that as well? Give me the volume. You know what? Give me this time in terms of pi because I don't want to round to the end. Okay, So give me your volume of the hemisphere in terms of pi. Okay, So I'm going to go up here and I'm going to go 6 to the third is 216. And I've got to multiply that times two thirds. So that's 144. Okay. So that means my volume is 144 pi. Now that's for the hemisphere. So I'm going to highlight that in yellow to remind myself that's the hemisphere. Now I need the volume of the cylinder. Hey, what's the formula for volume of a cylinder? Okay. Volume of a cylinder is either 
area of the base times the height, or you may say pi r squared h. Both of those would be correct answers. Okay, my radius is still six. My height is also six because we said those two things were congruent. So when I look at that, that's gonna be 216 pi, okay? So what's the volume of this entire solid figure? Hopefully you were saying, oh, well, the volume of the entire solid figure in terms of pi is going to be adding these together. So 144 plus 216 gives me 360 pi, which if I round that, um, I'm going to slide here and just put this answer on the next page just a little bit. If I give myself my two decimal solution here, that's 360 pi, which remember is not the same 360 as degrees, 1130.97. There we go. So 1130.97 cubic centimeters is the volume of the entire thing. Okay. So that's really the whole idea of volumes. And really, it's just using the equations. The arithmetic is really easy. Let's do one more problem. Um, then maybe I'll have you do the classwork problems here at the end. So two tennis balls are in a can as shown. What is the amount of space around the tennis balls? So we've got our tennis balls. I'm going to highlight my tennis balls in yellow here. Do, do, do. Well, provide the yellow pen works. There we go. Here's the other tennis ball. But I don't really care about that. That's not what I'm looking for. What I want to know is how much space is there inside the can? How much air is in the can? Okay. Interesting thing about volume. Volume always exists. Okay. We always have some. Everything's full. Is the glass half full or half empty? The answer is it's always full. It's full of water or air and both. Okay. So two things I need to know. First of all, how much will the can hold, okay? So calculate the volume of the cylinder in terms of pi. So volume of the cylinder, whoops, my pen's not writing, there we go, is pi r squared h. So that's pi, my radius is nine, height is 26. So I'm gonna go to my handy dandy calculator, nine squared times, whoops, that's not times, times 26, it's 2106. Make sure my units are the same there, yes. 2106 pi. So that's centimeters cubed because that's my volume of that, of the cylinder, okay? Now I need the volume of one of the tennis balls. So the volume of a sphere. Find me the volume of one tennis ball in terms of pi. So volume formula, four thirds pi r cubed. So four thirds pi, radius is six. And I think we already did that earlier, didn't we? Six cubed and then times four thirds, my computer's freezing up. Yeah, 216, no, lies. Well, let's just calculate it first to be sure. So six two to third, and then we take the 216 times 4 thirds, 288. There we go. So you should have gotten 288 pi centimeters cubed. Don't just tell me 288 because that's not correct. It's 288 times the number pi. But that's only one tennis ball. So now what I want you to do, find the volume of the space. in terms of pi, go for it. So hopefully you were able to go, okay, so 2106 pi minus two of the tennis balls. So really that's 2106 pi minus, let's multiply that by two, is 576, when I get those equals, all right, minus 276, that's not what I said, is it? 576. 576 pi. So my solution, 
3106 minus 576 is 1530 pi cubic centimeters. That's my answer in terms of pi, okay? Let's round that answer. So we get a number that makes sense in our world. 4806.64. 4806.64 cubic centimeters of air. Okay. So very simple problems. Use your equations, figure out your solutions. Okay. So that's going to bring you to some classwork. Three problems to figure out. Solve for the volume of these three things. Now I help you out here. Let's take a look at what the measurements are. Six centimeters, six centimeters, 10 centimeters. Okay. So now you know that. Figure out those It'll check your answers at the end here. Then you've got a short Google form to work on and we'll finish up our volumes unit and we'll do some review on this. See you later.